So there is no doubt the decision to indict has elicited a strong reaction across the political spectrum. New CNN polling shows many Americans believe politics played at least some role in the decision to indict Donald Trump. Take a look at this. 52% say politics played a major role, and you see 23% say a minor role. Some think no role, and there's also an element of people who still, they really are not sure. CNN's Jeff Zeleny joins us now for much more on this. Jeff, many people think people that politics played some role in this indictment, but how many people, uh, uh, how many people that were polled actually approve of the indictment? Okay, this is so interesting. Of course, you cannot divorce politics from any of this because we are talking about the former president here, who, of course, is a, a current candidate for the White House. But when you look at the findings of our new poll, take a look at this. 60% of Americans, some 6 in 10 of Americans, support the overall um, um, indictment here, and 40% are against it. That's largely driven by... Um, sort of some common views from Republicans. Of course, they're opposed. Democrats support. But independents largely follow uh, this rule. So that is so interesting, that 60 percent support. And we should be clear, we do not know exactly what is in the indictment. This is just based on the broad confines of a familiar storyline of a hush money payment that we've been talking about for more than six years now. So six in 10 Americans support that. But there is so much more interesting findings um, um, in our poll this morning that really speaks to the dynamic of the politics going into this, Kate. And one thing we see is that one thing, maybe the, the only unsurprising thing uh, in this is that it shows that the nation is remains so divided, especially right. when it comes to Donald Trump. But what what is it? What are you seeing in this poll in terms of the overall impact, the impact on the country, the impact on democracy? We should talk about the historic nature of this. Yes, uh, you know, this is a um, really a run-of-the-mill indictment, but a former president has never been indicted and arraigned. So the next 48 hours are going to see something in the country we have never seen before. So when you talk about democracy, take a look at these numbers. What do you think about the strength of democracy? Uh, and 31 percent of Americans say that it strengthens it. 31 percent say it weakens. 23 percent, it has no effect at all. So divided. Americans clearly divided among uh, party lines uh, and familiar lines on this. But this is a historic proceeding, no question. So we cannot uh, not take stock of all of that. But uh, there is no doubt as we go forward here, democracy is at the core of this. Uh, and the uh, he obviously has other uh, cases pending in Georgia and in federal court as well. So this is something that will be a through line of all this conversation today, Kate. That's, that is, and that is a great point. It's right. good to see you, Jeff. Thank you so much. CNN's Kara Scannell is outside the court in New York City for us. Uh, Kara, you know, officials in New York are, are set to make a public announcement that we're just hearing, uh, the commissioner and the mayor. What are you learning? Yes, Sarah, that's right. So just about at noon Eastern, New York City Mayor and the NYPD Commissioner are expected to make an announcement to address the public about the security measures that are in place for Trump's arraignment tomorrow. Now, sources tell Bryn Gingras that there are no credible threats against the courthouse or in the area, and there's no threat of disruptors, uh, but they will give the public a briefing of what to expect. Now, behind the scenes, there's a lot that's also happening. There's restrictions on the 15th floor in the courthouse behind me, over my shoulder. That is where the former president will be arraigned come in self-surrender midday and they were speeding up this process he may or may not have a mugshot taken there are questions about that he's likely to be fingerprinted and then he will walk down a public hallway where other defendants everyone from drug dealers to his former chief financial officer and go into the courtroom and face the judge that's when the judge will ask him to enter a plea and trump's attorneys say that he will plead not guilty from there trump is expected to head back to the airport and then back to mar-a-lago where he said he will address the nation at 8 15. So Sarah? Yeah, uh, arraignments are a regular course of business for the courts, but not this one. Can you give us a sense of what Trump's legal team has been saying? They have done a media blitz over the last few days. Yeah, they certainly have. And I mean, their main point here is that they are going to look for every possible way to launch a legal challenge in this case. Put going ahead that they're putting forward an aggressive posture. Now, one thing that um, one of Trump's attorneys, Joe Takapina, he was on CNN yesterday um, saying, you know, just how aggressive they're going to take this. Take a listen. We will take the indictment. We will dissect it. Um, the team will look at every every um, potential issue that we, we will be able to challenge and we will challenge. And of course, I very much anticipate a motion to dismiss coming because there's no law that fits this. 
So they're looking to take a bunch of legal angles here, motions to dismiss, also possibly challenging the statute of limitations in this case, as well as other matters. Now, the one thing, though, is that those motions will all happen a bit down the road because they've yet to see what the specific charges are in this indictment. And CNN and other media organizations have asked the judge to unseal that. The judge has a deadline for both sides, the Trump and the DA, to respond at 1 p.m. And we could see these specific charges and the indictment unsealed later today. Sarah? Kara Scannell, thank you. Outside of the court there in New York, I want to bring in CNN national correspondent Kristen Holmes. You are in West Palm Beach, Florida, as we can see, uh, with the, the wind and the water behind you. Um, the president is set to take off in, I think, less than an hour. What are you learning about his plan? Sarah, that's absolutely right. So we are waiting to see him leave his Mar-a-Lago home. He will be traveling with a small group of aides, including his top campaign advisors, Susie Wiles and Chris LaCivita. They will be traveling by motorcade to the airport, which is close by, and then flying into LaGuardia on Trump's private plane, and they are expected to land around 3 o'clock. Then we are told Trump will go to Trump Tower, and I was actually just told by a source that he is likely to meet with his lawyers while he is in Trump Tower. He will spend the night there before heading to the courthouse on Tuesday. Now, as you noted, and as Kara noted, he will come back almost immediately after that arraignment to deliver remarks. We will be there at Mar-a-Lago at his resort, and I am told by sources this will be the former president's opportunity to really take control of the narrative. Of course, we have heard him from the last several weeks calling this a political witch hunt, a hoax, but this will be the first time that we actually see him respond to the charges as we all learn them on Tuesday afternoon. That's when we're expected to actually learn what they are. All right, Krista Holmes, thank you. They are live uh, from West Palm Beach. Let's go ahead and dig deeper into the security concerns now. Joining us is Jonathan Wackrow. He is CNN law enforcement analyst and a former Secret Service agent. So you know this like the back of your hand, except this is unprecedented. Let's talk about what's gonna happen here. Usually the Secret Service is in charge mm -hmm. of presidents, former presidents, vice presidents, and they're the ones that sort of make the plan. Is that gonna be different now? It is different now. The Secret Service is not the lead coordinating uh, agency for this, uh, the security protocols that we see being put into place. It's actually the NYPD is taking the lead role along with the New York State Court officers. They're really bifurcating the internal security of the courthouse and then external in the city at large. And that's unique for the Secret Service. Typically, we do see them in that lead coordinating role, whether it's for you know, political rallies, presidential events. But this is different. This is a private event. This is private business that the former president has to do in front of the court. So from the Secret Service, standpoint, it's almost administrative. Their responsibility is the protectee, bringing him from point A into the courthouse, allowing the former president to do his business before the court and getting out all safely, but very well coordinated with other law enforcement entities uh, who, are, who are participating in tomorrow's event. I, I, I'm curious how long it has taken for them to coordinate, knowing all of this uh, that has been happening in the lead up to this. Um, but I do want to ask you what their concerns are. I mean, there are a myriad of things that could happen when you have a city the size of New York Correct. with the speed at which New York you know, flows. What are the big security concerns that, that they should be looking out for? Well, really, you have to think about, like, we've known about tomorrow for a while, yeah. right? We anticipated it. So law enforcement has been coordinating, putting together a security plan, uh, in the overlay of the city, so not just at the courthouse, but the city at large. The challenge is addressing the wild card events. What mm -hmm. happens if there's peaceful protest that actually turns into... Uh, you know, violence, what happens, it's consequence management. But the NYPD does this better than any other law enforcement entity in the world. They're prepared. Tomorrow you'll see 35,000 uniformed NYPD officers in a 24-hour period making sure that the city is safe and secure. They're gonna play it extremely cautious. Why? Because law enforcement no longer has to anticipate whether or not domestic violence extremists will actually engage. We know from January 6th that they will. So they have to over-prepare tomorrow, prepare for the worst case scenario, hope for the best, hopefully it's peaceful protest, 
individuals expressing their First Amendment constitutional right, but it doesn't transcend into violence. violence. And we know, very similar to January 6th, you, you are hearing from the former president. He is mm -hmm. calling on people to, to be there, to support him. Um, I do want to ask you about this sort of, you know, mandate that every agency has. Mm -hmm. um, and everything is political at mm -hmm. some point, right, when you're dealing with yeah. a former president. Um, and certainly he's made it so in posting on social media. So when it comes to Donald Trump and when it comes comes to the Secret Service handling this particular unprecedented historic case, how do they do it without getting sucked into the politics? Well, listen, there's no other law enforcement entity in the world that's drawn into politics more than the Secret Service, right? By the nature of their job, they're at the White House, they're with uh, political leaders. But this is a seminal moment for the agency where they have to remain neutral. The optic has to show that they're not carrying favor to the former president mm -hmm. nor the DA. They need to focus on their primary remit, which is protection, protecting the former president because that's what they're mandated to do. They work with other law enforcement entities to to ensure that the area is secure, but they are not coordinating any special accommodations for the president inside. The moment that they do, they'll, they'll be swayed one way or the other. And right now, it is essential for the agency just to do their core responsibility of protection.